to yeah. make sure the dog straightens before we send it back again because the twist can send the dog off a little bit skew with. So very important when we're training, we make sure the dog straightens before we ask the dog to walk back. Very nice, Piglet. Excellent. Right, Gino is now going to do a half twist. Now this is where a dog and handler really has to flow together. They turn together, pick the dog up on the right hand side, they're going to turn again. And you can see synchronisation is what we're looking for here. Little Gino, he's actually keeping his concentration today. He's always one to watch Gino, bit of a joker. Very nice. So there's a twist, easy move, everybody can teach. We're going to move on to a leg weave now. So if you'd like to just bring the dog slightly forward everybody, and off you go. Into their leg weave, they're using two treats, one in each hand, and they're taking the dog through the legs. Take your treat down fairly low, so the dog can really see the food. You can see here with Piglet, we've really got the treat right in front of her nose, showing her where to go. Right, so they're into the leg weave there, like uh, Millie here, she's following her food, so now we're not going to have so much food in our hands. We're going to motion with our hand through the leg, and when the dog gets back to the left hand side, we're going to reward it. So we're now actually wanting the dog to perform the action, and we're introducing the command without the hands too much. We'll gradually build this up until we don't move our hands much at all. Here with Gino, see how the hand is giving a body signal, which will help when they're in a routine. The dog will read the body signal rather than follow the hands. So a leg weave, easy enough, that is, but not so easy when you've got to walk and do it at the same time. So, uh, little uh, Tilly here is going to show you the traditional forward walking leg weave. Requires a great sort of combination of team because they need to be skilled, the dog needs to be looking for that leg to go under. Now, uh, you can see with Tilly, she's looking for the leg and that's what we're looking for her to do as she's going through there. That's it, pick your tree top. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. So we're looking for some flows through that, but if you had a big German Shepherd, it wouldn't flow quite so well because you, you've got to wait for the whole body of the dog to go through. So what we want uh, Millie to do is Millie's going to come forward and she's going to do a side-to-side leg weave. Now this is much better for your bigger dog. Look what uh, the handler's doing here is she's moving nicely away from the dog, which is making that figure of eight larger, and it means the bigger dog can really flow through. Again, Millie's looking for the leg to go under as she's given the command we. Very nice. Millie's getting her brain in gear now, that's good. Excellent. Right, Piglet up to the top for me, please. And uh, Piglet's going to show you a weave in a different direction. If you've got a really fast dog that weaves really fast, okay, the walking backwards of the handler means the handler doesn't have to walk that fast. But the dog has to do all the work. So it's just quite useful if you've got a very fast dog. Because if you've got a forward walking a fast dog, you've got to keep up with it and go at 90 miles an hour. But you can see here, Piglet, uh, she's got the long way to go. So it makes it a lot easier for the handler to slow it down. Okay, well done, Piglet. Right, now Gina's going to show you a different type of leg weave. Because there's actually two ways that you can teach your dog to go through your legs. All the dogs you've seen up to now, when they come on the left or right, they come back to the normal heel work facing forward position. But if uh, Gino did stop, you'd see that he actually ends up facing the opposite way to the handler when it gets on the left and right. We call this a fly leg weave because it is a weave on a different line. Because we don't want to say weave to the dog, so we just say fly so the dog can pick up which weave we require of it. Okay, handlers, bring your dogs up to the middle and get them into a sit side onto the audience if you can. And we're going to show you what you probably taught your dog, and that's sit and give a paw. Now, to teach that, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the dog's paw and give the dog a treat from the other hand. So you can see here with Millie, we picked up the paw, we've told her what a super dog she is as soon as she's a uh, the hand has picked the paw up and said, oh wow, that's what we want to do is convey to that dog, giving that paw to your hand is the best thing ever. You feed it treats as soon as it puts its paw on your hand, you have a party basically. Now if you have a party and you go mad when the dog does something, it'll want to do it again. So very quickly, the dog will start to realise 
but it places its foot on it, your open hand, and there might be a bit of a reward in it. Now the handlers will give each paw a different command. Again, very important, in a routine you might want a Pacific paw, so you don't want to go paw and paw, because how's the top to know which one you want? But you can see we've got some small dogs here today, and you don't want to keep bending down. So these handlers, what we're going to do now is show you how to teach your dogs to foot target. That the hand, handler to start with will hold their hand relatively low. The dog will go to touch the, the hand, but a miss and touch the leg or the paw, um, leg or the foot, okay? And um, you can see very quickly the handler can start to stand up and they don't need to bend down, which is great for, you know, these small dogs, you're not bending over them, you can make more of the move by putting your foot forwards, Gino doing it very nicely there. It's also a really good move for your larger dogs as well because you can move away from that dog. If you've got a dog with a longer leg, it looks very elegant if the dog is really reaching forwards to the handler's foot. Well done everybody. Right. You taught your dog to give a paw, but that's a bit last year. Everybody gets their dog to give a paw. We've got to make it a little bit more interesting. So we're going to watch these two dogs in the middle just for a minute. This is Millie. Millie and Tilly. It rhymes. Right. We're going to get them into the middle and show you a foot target slightly different. You can see here what the dogs are doing. They place their feet on their owner's feet. Now that previous work we've just done of getting the dog used to touching our feet facing us helps us now here where we're wanting the dog to place its paws on our feet. Now when we first start this you do find the dogs freak a little bit because it's a bit odd to have sort of your foot moving underneath their paw. So we need to give lots of rewards. You can see with these two dogs very comfortable with being there. Well done. Both wagging their tails. Right, bring them back down there. Give them a little round of applause. That was very good, wasn't it? Right, we've got Gino and Piglet. Come on, Gino, forwards, up to the middle here, so everybody can see. Now, this is a much more technical move for the dog to do. It does take a long time to get. That's why you won't see so many dogs doing it. It's to try and balance on three legs and walk on three legs. Both of these dogs are just starting to learn this, so you can see how the Piglet, we're using the food very close to her, and they're using the uh, hand there to initiate the move. You can see here with Gino, he requires to lean a little bit onto the handler at the moment, and that's all normal, and as the dog gets confident, it will move away from the handler, and in the case of Piglet, will start to stand up. Give them a little round of applause, I think that was very good. Okay, so we've taught the dogs individual moves. We've got to start to put it together if we're going to do a four minute routine. And bear in mind, in a routine, you'll do it perhaps for two, three, four minutes, you'll have no rewards. Right, we're going to show you a, of a few sequences now. So this is the next stage. You start to do multiple moves with the dog before you reward it. Now with Gino, we're doing a nice half twist, half twirl into a round. His favourite little move there, look at him go. That's little Gino the Lounchin, he did that well. Give him a round of applause, very good. Right, and here we have little Tilly. Now, if you didn't join us earlier, Tilly is completely deaf. Uh, she's a rescue dog, and uh, Tony's not had her that long. I think it's only about perhaps a year and a half. And uh, this is her first time at Crofts, doing a nice little... as we call it. Give little Tilly a round of applause. Right, well, let's get Millie and talk to her lot. We've got to really talk to Millie. She's a good dog, but sometimes she gets a bit distracted. So we have to talk to her lot. We've got to make it look exciting. She likes reversing around. And, uh, oh, we're going to finish with a little jump. She's thinking about it. Yeah, we got the jump in the end there. Well done. Okay, let's bring Piglet forward. Right. Piglet's going to start with a walk back in front of the handler, nice and straight. That's what we're always looking for. Into a little round. There we go, round we go. Very nice. Now notice 
notice this attention that that dog is giving this handler. Really critical that the dog is 100% paying attention to the handler because the dog's got to be ready to take any command or action we give it. Very good, okay. Space yourselves out along that side, please. So move yourself back along. We've got a few minutes to go. So we can show you one or two other little moves that you can go home and uh, teach your dog. So, handlers, if you get your dogs to the front position, we're going to do a little walk back. So, you saw Piglet doing this earlier. How do you teach your dog to walk back? Well, you get two treats in each hand and you put your hands together because you never know which hand you're going to need to reward the dog from. You put the food into the front of the dog. You see that very well here with Gino. And you can see we're not taking the head up because the dog might sit. We're taking the head fairly well down, even into the dog's chest. The dog will start to move back, and if it does start to go a bit wonky, Tilly here, she's going a little bit with her bum now and again, but you notice how Tony just adjusts her hands a little bit to straighten the dog. So we're not nagging it, we're just making sure, if we just turn our hands slightly, we can straighten that dog and reward it for being straight. Now as the handler gets more confident, as you can see with Piglet, the handler can start to stand up. They've given the command now, they've put the command to the action of walking back. Now the hands go completely away, but notice this focus that P Piglet is giving again. It's up towards the face, that's what we're looking for. That constant attention from the dog. We don't want a dog looking around the arena, especially if you're down there in the main arena, there could be 5,000 people sitting there. You don't want that dog looking around. Okay, handlers, bring your dogs back down this end. Right, if you'd like to place your dogs into a bow for me. A bow is a really nice traditional way to uh, finish your routine. Tilly does a very nice bow here. That finishes our display. If you do want to come and meet the dogs and got any questions, we'll be at the side over there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.